you so much everybody for coming out today on this beautiful day. I guess the only thing we could say about the weather is maybe we wish it was raining, but uh, not at this very moment. Um, my name is George Dondero. I am the executive director of the Regional Transportation Commission, um, the sponsoring agency of this project. And we thank you all for joining us today to celebrate uh, the opening of this project. It's actually been open for a while, but all the work is now complete. And as you know, uh, it's, it's fully functional. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging uh, some of the elected folks that are here today um, who are not on the program um, or representing elected folks. Um, Alec Arago is here from uh, Congressman Sam Farr's office. Alec, thank you for coming. Um, Leslie Viegas is here from Senator Monning's office. Uh, Leslie. And Leslie had brought us a certificate of recognition from the senator to uh, put up on our trophy wall. Thank you so much to the senator for that. Um, Eduardo Montesino, uh, current chair of the Regional Transportation Commission. Eduardo. Um, and also on the City Council of Watsonville. Uh, Supervisor Bruce McPherson, um, also on the commission. Thank you, Bruce, for coming today. Uh, and then uh, also I'd like to acknowledge uh, Angela Aiken is here representing Metro, uh, our frequent partner in many projects, not specifically on this one. And uh, Parag Mehta, who was the uh, chief engineer uh, leading the design work on this project. So, um, so thank you everybody for coming out today. Um, so many of you know uh, this project uh, goes back to about 2002 when the commission started working on this corridor uh, to do the environmental and, and early engineering work. And uh, the, the passage of a bond in 2006 by California voters um, gave this project a kickstart. So we pulled this one out and uh, started working on it uh, in a very focused way. And um, the result is what you see today. Um, we'd also like to acknowledge that Congressman Sam Farr, who couldn't be here today, um, did help us get some funding that got the early work started on this project so that we, we were able uh, to complete it uh, on time and get uh, secure that uh, state bond money which paid for the construction of it. So many thanks to Congressman Farr for that. Um, there's been a theme of partnership on this project from the very beginning. Um, starting with Caltrans, um, it is their highway, and we worked very closely with Caltrans to make sure that uh, everything was built according to the manual, I guess. And um, also with the California Transportation Commission, who was our funding partner on this, and uh, we worked very closely with their staff uh, to make sure everything uh, was there when it was needed. Um, the city of Santa Cruz has been a, a wonderful partner I just realized I missed somebody from the city. Um, Council member Don Lane is here also. Thank you, Don, my apologies. Um, city of Santa Cruz and their staff have been great to work with. Um, there's been many uh, details about the project, uh, particularly on either side of the highway um, where improvements were needed, uh, drainage needed to be changed, um, paving needed to be done, sidewalks and uh, put in and, and many many little details that were important and had to get done. And um, also I'd like to acknowledge the great cooperation of the school district um, and, the, and the staff of the schools on both sides, uh, both Harbor High and De La Viega. And we'll, we'll hear a little more about that uh, a little later. Um, this project uh, had several goals, um, consistent with RTC's mission to provide multimodal improvements um, on uh, all of our projects throughout the county. Um, but we also worked very hard at communicating with the community. And uh, that, was, that was a very, very major uh, goal of ours from, from the very beginning, way before the construction started, um, to provide frequent and timely communication with the uh, neighbors and anybody affected by uh, the bridge closure, including of course all the students um, on both sides of the highway. Um, and we did have several meetings before construction even began uh, to make sure everybody was ready for that and that uh, we could provide the services and uh, help with the adjustment 
uh, when the bridge was down. Um, so our, I thank all of our RTC team for, for the hard work they put in to make all those things happen and run smoothly. This is the first project that the commission has managed from design through environmental and then on to construction. And I think we're very proud of that. Um, it shows that our agency can uh, get the job done and we hope you agree. Um, in August, we celebrated the opening of this bridge and those of you that were here may remember that uh, you could barely see the bridge because there were so many people out here. We estimated about 500 people showed up. It was quite a day. Um, this is just uh, a, another acknowledgement to celebrate the completion of the entire project and we're very, very proud uh, to be doing that today. So with that, uh, I will uh, hand off to uh, Santa Cruz Mayor and Regional Transportation Commissioner uh, Lynn Robinson. Thank you, George. And what an honor it is to be here amongst all of you with this exciting completion of the project and acknowledgement today. So thank you all for being here. And like many of you who serve our community, I do wear many hats. I'm not only a Regional Transportation Commission board member, but I'm also on the Metropolitan Transit District, the Association of Monterey Bay Governments, and a founding member of Santa Cruz Neighbors. And currently I do serve as the mayor of the city of Santa Cruz. It is with this experience that I appreciate the challenges of delivering a project of this magnitude with many partners, many of you here, in close proximity to sensitive locations such as a high school and an elementary school. And weren't they incredible coming and singing and getting the program going? That was awesome. In a communicative and efficient and positive fashion, that's really the goal and what got met in this project, as you have already heard. So just to set the context, here's a little background about the Highway 1 Soquel Morrissey Auxiliary Lane project. The project was originally embedded in the 9-mile Highway 1 HOV Lane project, which is now called the Corridor Investment Program. And the planning level of the tiered environmental document for that set of projects will be available for public review later this year. And via a statewide competitive process, the RTC successfully secured 2008 voter-approved Proposition 1B funding for the construction of the Soquel Morrissey Auxiliary Lane project. The RTC board decided it would be beneficial for the agency to assume the role of construction management for the project to be able to, pro full, to provide the community with locally effective input opportunities, outreach, and solutions. And all along, that's really been the goal, the process, and the outcome. It's been phenomenal to be a part of that. In this role, the RTC has worked diligently with all the project partners successfully for this project delivery. And as you can see, and as George mentioned earlier in the year when we did the first opening, to see 500 plus members of the public come out and just celebrate, it was quite a day. It was quite a day. Um, the project components include the new auxiliary lanes, which connect an off-ramp with the next on-ramp in each direction. Therefore, we extend the auxiliary lane initiated by the Highway 1, Highway 17 interchange merge lanes project, as you can see behind us here. The intent of the auxiliary lanes is to smooth the flow and shorten the bottleneck of this highly trafficked segment of the Highway 1. The La Fonda Bridge was not wide enough to accommodate the new lanes, so it was replaced and upgraded to provide better sidewalks and bike lanes to serve the neighborhoods in the adjacent elementary and high school. So although the traffic volumes on La Fonda are relatively low, the bridge is a vital link for the community and a critical access point to and from the schools. So these new amenities and this improvement is a huge new asset for this entire community, but especially for the schools that travel so heavily nearby. In addition, the project includes sound walls, landscaping, and other lasting safe route to school amenities, such as the improved bicycle and pedestrian path connecting the parkway and La Fonda, which were added features to this project the new sidewalks in the Morrissey-Pacheco area, and the new bicycle racks at Harbor High School. The transportation demand management programs were implemented at both schools to reduce project impacts. And I have to say, we got to see that as RTC board members, how incredibly um, just forward thinking the staff was with working and connecting and making that happen so seamlessly. Really do appreciate that. 
And I do want to take a minute to appreciate the RTC staff team that worked on this project. They worked so diligently and so hard. Project manager, Kim Schultz. Thank you, Kim. Outreach coordinator, Corinna Pushnik. School Transportation Demand Management Program Development, which is Tegan Spicer. And oversight by Executive Director George Dondero, which is you just heard from, as well as our Deputy Director Luis Mendez. I mean, this takes a village, it takes a team, and we had the best, and it, may, it really made it happen so well. The RTC is extremely proud to have worked closely with all partners, including Caltrans, the City of Santa Cruz, equal partners and things that you heard described because it really took a lot of work for the things that surrounded us here within the city. Schools and contractors, there's so much involved in doing this and it was to minimize the impacts of the construction process on the commuters, on the neighbors living adjacent to and near the project and to the schools and I have to say I think we really did a successful job of that. And it really is these partnerships that make this happen and give us a project like this that we can really say this is a great success. And with that, it's my great honor and privilege to introduce Caltrans District Director, Tim Gibbons. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm so happy that Caltrans can be a partner for a project like this. It's been a wonderful thing to see developed and delivered. Um, this Oxlane project that we're celebrating today, it's going to work to reduce the delay here on one, enhance the safety, as well as improving the bike and pedestrian access here on, on La Fonda Bridge, which really helps, again, as been mentioned, tie in the community, you know, make it usable, make this area usable for all users. Um, as the owner-operator of this, Caltrans has been a part of this. We've been working together with RTC. They've taken the lead on this, and as, as uh, George Andero had pointed out a little earlier, I think they've done a great job bringing it all the way through, the, from basically from inception to uh, a road we can all drive on today. Um, so we will continue working together, improving this corridor for the travelers who use it daily. Um, completion through the environmental document, detailed design, the construction phases, which actually impacts construction more, or the public more, and the coordination and teamwork that we had between uh, the RTC, the, through their consultants, with Caltrans, with Federal Highway, as, as, well, as well as all the other local communities has been a wonderful thing to see. Um, another part that's been mentioned a little bit, funding for the project, again, we have a combination. We have local, state, federal funds. Um, construction capital, was be, we were able to compete well for that for the corridor mobility improvement account. Uh, it's a subset of the Prop 1B. And the reason we were so successful is we had been working together. We had a project that we were able to deliver and meet the goals of, of that corridor mobility. Um, so after that was passed in 2006, we started the competition and got that. Um, so San, again, RTC, having the project already in development, was able to successfully compete for those funds. So again, the partnership there, as well as all the aesthetic treatments, including all the landscaping we see. The landscaping will be continued to be maintained by the project for another year, then they'll hand it off over to us in Caltrans. So all those were developed with community input to see what would this actually look like when the project's done. So we, we've seen a steady growth of traffic volumes here um, along Highway 1, along 17, and these are the main corridors up here. So we're, again, proud to partner with the RTC in delivering an important project such as this for the community, regional, inter-regional travelers. Um, this really does go to improve the quality of life for the residents and visitors alike. And so with that, just thank you to everyone involved. And it's my honor then to introduce the next speaker, rep a parent representing the high school, Liz Pollock. not prepared but I wanted to say that throughout the whole process uh, Miss Pushnik was able to uh, let us parents and students know what to expect um, through email through mailing through the phone 
um, and warning us uh, uh, with a good amount of time. And really that's what we wanted for our kids to be at their desks in time to, uh, uh, well, you know, to learn and do well in school. And um, I thank her for being so uh, transparent and having um, having everything ready for us. And it turned out so beautiful. And I don't know if you've been here at, in the evening, but the lights are so nice. And uh, thank you so much for for having me speak. I was going to say one more thing. If we could only have uh, the same uh, clear expectations on Highway 17 now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Liz. Well, hello, my name's John Leopold. Uh, I'm a Santa Cruz County Supervisor and I'm Vice Chair of the Regional Transportation Commission. You know, one of the things about this project is not only um, highlighting what it did to the highway, but it also gave a chance for us to show the other parts of the work that the Regional Transportation Commission funds and supports uh, every year. Uh, in order, when you take out a bridge, like this LaFonda Bridge uh, that connects the community, that connects schools together. Uh, you can't do that lightly. And as you heard, our staff work very diligently uh, with the community through a series of meetings, through regular conversations with the schools to be able to, to support uh, the families and the students uh, to be able to attend school, to, to connect uh, with the neighborhood and the schools. Uh, so uh, every year uh, we're lucky enough uh, to support alternative transportation programs like the Voltage Program, uh, which is Ecology Action's Active Transportation Incentive Program. Uh, they got assistance from the Community Foundation and they expanded it to De La Viega Elementary to encourage not only bicycle and walking, but also carpooling. Carpooling is also something uh, we support through the Commute Solutions Program. These are ways in which we're trying to get people out of their uh, single occupancy cars um, and uh, that also helps uh, relieve the congestion on the highway and congestion on our streets and it's better for the environment. There was a lot of work done uh, to support um, our bicycle programs and we also uh, uh, had a shuttle program which provided shuttle service between home and school to a group of about uh, 23 Harbor students and 22 De La Viega students who had previously walked or biked across the La Fonda Bridge but when it was out, we needed to find alternative transportation. Uh, so I have the great pleasure of distributing the keepsakes, uh, which uh, allows us also to, to highlight another uh, good environmental piece, which is uh, reuse. And uh, today we have mementos uh, uh, for some folks who are here, um, which is, uh, it looks like a rock, but really it's a piece of the old La Fonda Bridge. So this is a keepsake, you can't get this in stores. So uh, I want to first call up the, the chair of the Regional Transportation Commission, uh, Eduardo Montesino. Uh, he could be, receive his first rock. Thank, thank you very much. Um, just wanted to say a, a couple brief words, uh, not only on behalf of being the chair, but also being a frequent user as a commuter and as a resident of Watsonville. I'd like to thank everyone's support and joint partnership to make this happen. And we should move forward on the next piece. Thank you very much. We have also have a couple other keepsakes. Uh, uh, Alex Aragno uh, uh, from uh, Congressman Sam Farr's office. Looks like he gets a big rock. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Supervisor. Uh, I, on behalf of Congressman Farr, who really regrets he couldn't be here. Uh, George mentioned that this started, uh, that, that there was a federal earmark, and it was, it was an earmark, uh, in a 2005 transportation bill, three million bucks, that the, RT, the uh, RTC used to do the preliminary environmental work, and that uh, helped them gain the, the funding from the, prop, the, the uh, state bond uh, proposition. Uh, and so there's a, uh, I think it's an illustration of, uh, why we why Mr. Farr likes earmarks when they're done well? I mean, this is a this is it's a bridge to somewhere. Uh, it's, it's a it's a crucial link, and it's an example of uh, when done well. And hopefully, we, we can at a national will return to uh, a, a wise use of, of this tool. It's it's something that's important to as Sam always says, important to small communities. Uh, 
uh, it's it's easy for the New Yorks and, and LAs of the world to get into the uh, the formula funds, but for a, a, a little project in a little community, uh, it's critical to have that uh, extra uh, leverage and tool. And then this is just a good example of that. And uh, I'll, I'll take back this rock to uh, to Sam. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Uh, next, uh, representing uh, Senator uh, Bill Monning, Leslie Vegas. not expect to speak and this is actually my first event uh, presenting a certificate so uh, on behalf of Senator Bill Monning we just wanted to present a certificate of recognition uh, for this great project and the great collaboration thank you Leslie I'm gonna invite up a few others but it's not necessary for you all to speak <laughs> Uh, here today is uh, one of my colleagues and a member of the Regional Transportation Commission, uh, Supervisor Bruce McPherson. Bruce, come up and get your piece of the rock. Uh, another one of my colleagues. I'm not going to let him have oh, a man. This helps 100,000 vehicles move to and fro. Let's keep moving southward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, already off script. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, also here today, another uh, commissioner and a colleague of mine, uh, Supervisor Greg Caput. Thank you. I'll stay yeah. with the script. Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, Greg. Uh, uh, also here is a member of the Transportation Commission, uh, Council Member Santa Cruz City Council Member Don Lane. <laughs> uh, then we have a number of uh, other folks uh, who are here, uh, some of who've been up here uh, from Caltrans, uh, Tim Gibbons, Gubbins. Thank you. Uh, from the City of Santa Cruz Department of uh, Public Works, I know Chris Schneider is here. story okay um, so I just have this sort of cute story about the project a small piece of it uh, the project brought sidewalks to residents of Santa Cruz particularly over at uh, Rooney and Pacheco and there was uh, a home that had been owned for 50 years uh, these people have been there a long time they didn't really like the idea of idea of having uh, sidewalks it was uh, difficult for them to put their uh, their heads around that part well this last November for Halloween it was the first time in 50 years they ever had trick-or-treaters, and they were just so excited about that. So it took us 50 years, but we won over one more person. Yeah. That was actually Chris Schneider. He wasn't dressed up as Chris Schneider. Um, also, uh, we are very fortunate to have the support of the California Highway Patrol, and I know the commander, uh, Commander Vincent, is here. Paul Vincent, you're going to come on up. Uh, we had a number of consultants uh, help us uh, with this project. Uh, the designer was NV5, uh, Nolte Parag Mehta. Parag, come up and get your piece of the rock. Um, our resident engineering was Parson Brickenhoff, uh, Bruce Schuwick. Schuchuk. Sorry about that. And our prime contractor was RGW, Dave Kennedy. Is Dave here? All right. Um, we had a lot of support from our local schools and uh, Harbor High School uh, principal, Richard Davis, was really uh, critical to the support of this. Uh, and from De La Viega, principal Angela Mika was also very helpful. Uh, 
Uh, I mentioned earlier that we had uh, great support from our community-based organization, Ecology Action, and Gene LePage is here. Gene helped uh, with the Voltage program. Thank you. Uh, and from uh, Michael's Transportation, Adriana Catledge and David Rouse. Okay. Um, and finally, I forgot my colleague, uh, uh, the mayor of Santa Cruz, uh, and a commissioner and, and served with me on the Metro Transit Board, Lynn Robinson. And because we spare no expense, it was a million, multi-million dollar project. We created this new uh, lane. Uh, we got, created this new bridge and we have cupcakes and cider for you to share in. So please join us as we celebrate uh, the opening of this portion of the highway. Thank you all for coming and uh, let's look forward to more projects in the future.